and they look like they're going to be good forever. <laughs> so let's bring in Mark Bowman from MLB, who covers the Atlanta Braves on a daily basis. Mark, great to have you on here. We'll get into the Braves, but you see plenty of Mets. What do you think of what just went down and what's been going on with the Mets over the past week? Well, I mean, I, I think we saw it coming, you know, for the last couple of months. But at the same time, when it when it when it happens and, and, and they do trade both these guys, uh, Scherzer and Verlander, I, I know there's probably a little bit of shock. But at the same time, this made perfect sense. I mean, the, they they made the mistake to, of signing these guys that you, you signed guys who were, you know, in their upper 30s and, uh, you know, or in, and in their 40s and, and all of a sudden expect them to be difference makers uh, you got to pay the price so at least they're they're um you know trying to fix what went wrong you know during the off season uh, or the past two off seasons so um you know you gotta give them credit they're they're not just uh sitting on that but at the same time yeah that this division looked much different than any of us expect at the beginning of the year and even at the beginning of june i think they came in here uh, the Mets came into Atlanta three games out or four games out, and now here they sit, you know, 18 games out or whatever. So uh, it's certainly, uh, you know, what, what what looked like it might be a very interesting race between three teams uh, right now. It, you know, the Braves are, um, you know, have run away with it, it. But at the same time, it's not just the Mets. You, you have to wonder what the, if the Phillies are going to make any kind of charge or, you know, maybe the Marlins, but probably not. Are the Braves sitting here going – <laughs> we don't even have to be part of this. Let's just let everyone else beat each other up and we'll just continue to do what we're doing for the next seven years of team control of everybody. <laughs> I mean, the one thing about it is, and by the way, who's, who's that dude with the hat on backwards over there in the gray t-shirt? He, he never, never comes, talks. He never, he never oh. comes on when you're on. He yeah. always, he was, I thought we out. had, <laughs> I thought we had Dave O'Brien on. That's why I stayed. <laughs> <laughs> I got confused. I was told they lied oh. to me and they said Dave O'Brien was coming on. And instead, I look up and it's Mark Bowman. What the hell's happening? I you know, guys lied they, to me. They, were, they told me they were like, they're like, you can come and talk to Eric Kretz and 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 then also uh, your favorite White Sox and Braves catcher, you know, guy about for both. Tyler and said, Flowers. Oh, and I expected to see Tyler Flowers. Here. <laughs> <laughs> AJ, what do you got? But anyhow, let's get back soon. to the question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, no, you, you had said what? What was it you said about? Uh, just what are they just kind of sitting on it for the next seven years? I mean, look, I mean, what they learned from last year, we're, we're reminded last year was, yeah, they had a great team last year. All of a sudden, Max Fried gets sick, uh, loses 15 pounds over the last, you know, week of the regular season. Spencer Strider, um, you know, tears his herbs, strains his oblique, whatever you want to say. Um, he's not healthy. I mean, it, it, they got to have what they're doing right now is just trying to build that pitching depth uh, to be able to. You know, maybe fill any voids down the stretch, but more importantly, a couple years ago, 2021, they, that big trade deadline haul, they got Soler and Duvall and Rosario and then Jock Peterson. Well, one of the biggest or most influential guys was Richard Rodriguez, who didn't even make the postseason roster. But the fact he came in and in eight innings for two months, um, that, that that really helped guys like Will Smith and A.J. Mentor and Luke Jackson, they you know they were they were fresh heading into October, and that's that's when they, they became the night shift, and and really had such a uh, played a key role in them winning that World Series. Bo, what are the Braves? The Braves are just trying to retool their bullpen right now, and, and, right? Because they got my boy Brad Hand today. They they made some minor moves, smaller not minor moves, but smaller than the huge moves. So they're ret- trying to retool the bullpen, obviously. And then when can we expect Freed, right? all these guys to come back and solidify. Listen, it ain't like the Braves are struggling. I mean, they just hit home run and bash you to death. But when they get Freed and Wright and all these guys back, can you tell us when they're coming back? Yeah, Freed will be back this week, and I would expect Friday. It could be Saturday, but fr- Friday or Saturday at Wrigley, he'll he'll be back. So all indications are that the it was a left forearm strain, which is never good to hear. But, you know, after sitting, uh, resting for two months and going through – uh, the rehab process. It looks like you know he's in good shape heading back. Uh, you know it, it doesn't seem like that that's going to be a lingering issue. Uh, as for Wright, you know, the other day he threw his first bullpen. I said, okay, how many more? And he said maybe two or three more bullpens. Then you get to live VP. I said, okay, that sounds like mid September. He said, 
I'm still hoping for early September. Well, the only way he's coming back for early September is if he you know, the, it goes through those rehab appearances and maybe pitches two innings here and three innings here, and then they activate him. Um, he's not going to stretch out to be a starter if he's if he's going to be back in early September. So that's another guy who could influence the bullpen down the stretch and maybe into the postseason. I, that, that's that's probably a long shot. I don't think that's something you depend on, but it, but it is an option. As for the guys that they they acquired here, like they added Pierce Johnson last last week from the Rockies. He had a good outing again last night, three strikeouts in a scoreless inning. Ed Bradhan, here's a guy who he still gets lefties out. Um, you know the ro- home and road splits weren't that much different in Colorado this year, but the, he does get lefties out. And if you put him in the right role in this bullpen where you, you can match up against, uh, you know. The, the right guys and in different parts of the lineup. He doesn't have to be, you know, um, that eighth or ninth inning guy. You know, he can just be – you can use him anywhere from the sixth through the eighth innings uh, against left-handers. I think he can be much more valuable here. He has been a little bit better since the All-Star break. They have Dylan Lee, another big left-hander who's coming back. If nothing else, Hand provides some insurance just in case Dylan Lee's shoulder is, isn't right when he comes back. You got Nick Anderson and Jesse Chavez who could come back sometime. Maybe I'm guessing Nick, Nick, well, Nick Anderson can't come back till September because he's on a 60 day. Chavez will be available second half of August. They may wait till the rosters expand for that. But they, there is some bullpen depth there. Uh, as for the rotation, uh, they're fifth starters. They went and got Chirinos last week. He's, you know, he, he didn't really impress the, the other day in, in his Atlanta debut, but at the same time, he did have a, season you know he did miss more bats than he had in any of his previous appearances with the Rays uh this year so you got him you got Michael Soroka you got AJ Smith Schauber um you got Jared Schuster you got a, you got some depth there that, that you can either mix and match in that fifth spot going forward you know over the rest of the season or hey look Alex could use some of that depth in, before six o'clock and and try to get you know just one more dependable starter but uh uh, he he does have the options because he has acquired some of these guys over the last couple, last week or so. So you mentioned everybody on their forty man roster, but <laughs> I want to know what is the one area of need, the one area the most glaring. They don't because you're not even talking about a, a like starting position or somebody that even plays in the game. You're just talking about backup position. What is the what is the least what is the least depth? that they have that they need to fill here in the next three hours? Well, I mean, okay, so, yeah, let, let's just go from a start starting position. If there was one area of concern, okay, last, this past weekend you might have said left field, okay? Eddie Rosario had, had a s- sensational June. And he had dipped a little bit here in July. He's hit a little bit more uh, over the last few days. The biggest thing with, with Eddie, I think you can go ahead and live with his bat and, and ride the highs and lows. The one thing I wish that, that Brian Snicker would do more often is, is just take him out of the game in the seventh inning, put Pilar out there. Um, you know, there, there's no reason to to have Eddie Rosario's game influence and, uh, you know, the, the outcome of the game over the last two or three innings. You know, even if, if you're ahead behind whatever, I think cutting Pilar's bat is enough, unless you know, you know, obviously the next inning it's, it's going to be a right-hand versus left-handed matchup. Uh, but for the most part, I think you do that. Uh, and then, you know, Marcelo Zuna, he, he had kind of, he quieted down for a little while, but then all of a sudden he had four homers and 10 at bats this past weekend against the, the Brewers. So it's hard to find a, a hole in that lineup as well. But it, if, if you were looking for some, it may be just adding another, uh, bat out there, uh, outfield bat there in left field. Hey, Mark, what do you think of the possibility of an Acuna versus Acuna matchup coming up in the not-so-distant future as Luis Angel was acquired by the Mets, right? So with the Mets, and we'll get into it again right after we talk to you, now filling out what we know from that deal, they've added a lot of prospects over the last week or so as they try and catch the Braves in the long term and not just let this team dominate the division like they've been doing already for the past half decade. But Acuna specifically, do you know much about Luis on hell? Have you spoken to Ronald about him? They're definitely different prospects. I know that, right? Like even yeah. when Ronald was coming up, Luis on hell has not shown much power, but he's very athletic and he's going to be an infielder mostly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, they are completely different players. I mean, Robert, Robert, I said, Ronald, um, you know, 
very high on his brother, you know, says he's, he's going to be uh, all this. It's not like back when the Contreras brothers were coming up and, and Wilson was saying that, uh, you know, that his, his younger brother was going to have more power than him and all that kind of stuff. I think it, it's, it's, it's more, um, I think he has a chance to be a very good player. I, I don't know if we're going to say he's going to be, if, if the feeling is he's going to uh, be that, you know, pretty all-star selection, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, it's, it will be fun. I, you know, I do think he's going to be a regular big leaguer for a while. And uh, those games, that's just going to add to that Braves and Mets rivalry. But Mark, great to have you on. Enjoy the rest of the few hours here with trade deadline season. What'd you say, AJ? I was going to say, Bo, go have a hot dog and a smack Frenchie for me. <laughs> and then also tell Snit when you go down to see him. Thanks for getting Charlie Culberson that one at bat this year. I mean, it means a lot. You know, he finally got in a game. He got that one at bat. I told him when I saw him before, just get him in for one. And he got one at bat. So tell Snit, thank you. I, I wonder if they got when Nicky Lopez showed up here the other day and said, Hey, by the way, just go ahead and relax. We might get you in a bat over the next one. <laughs> <laughs> Nicky Lopez is a great dude. So he will be fine, right? Like he will obviously he wants to play, but that, that was smart. You have to get. I will say you have to get players that are okay doing that. Like that you're like, Hey dude, you might not play for a month. A lot of dudes will bitch and moan. I know that from, from talking to you guys. So Mark, great to have you on, man. We'll, we'll catch you again soon. Okay. Take care. Thanks. Cheers. Appreciate you. Mark Bowman and same thing. You can hit up our Twitter. If you like what he's talking about.